I know, you can't help but wonder, but uh, when is that big earthquake going to hit us here in Southern California? Not that we're wanting it to happen, but we have to be ready, especially after all that we saw in Japan. It's just been another wake-up call for me, and I, I think for you, too. So we had to talk about it here on the show again. Cindy Dole, Home Wizards, where we talk about all things home, garden, and life improvement, and what about safety, right? That, of course, is a big factor, so thanks for uh, hanging out with me. And uh, when you saw all those images, and we still continue to see the... Uh, the trauma from the tsunami zone and, you know, the earthquake. I mean, did you know that they have, you're now leaving the tsunami zone signs that are in the beaches, along the beaches of Southern California? I never knew that until I saw it on Facebook. Apparently the Red Cross has had these signs up for quite some time. And now it really kind of gives you a whole new, whoa, you're now leaving the tsunami zone. Kind of wakes you up there. So when I was thinking about all that, you know, I couldn't help but not only worry about my own safety kit and yours, but then I thought as I'm driving around town, I'm looking at homes is that home safe? Is that home safe? What's the difference between that structure and what's happening in Japan? And we talk about it a lot, but I thought, you know, we need to revisit this. And so I wanted to check in with a guy who knows all of it, uh, Steve Paulrand. He is the founder of the construction company Homefront Build uh, with a background in architecture, always interested in construction since high school. And uh, you probably have seen him and, and have heard of his work because he's been participating in the renovation of the, this old house in Silver Lake that's on the, the first ever L.A. Uh, home that you're seeing on TV. So Thanks for being here, Steve. Well, thanks for having me. So retrofitting is part of your specialty. What is retrofitting? Uh, well, retrofitting is just tying the house down to the foundation mm -hmm. in, in its simplest terms. And this home that we're seeing on the This Old House uh, series on PBS, it's a 1920s home right in Silver Lake in this recently discovered fault zone, right? Right. And before, it probably wasn't very safe. Right. I mean, the codes have evolved over the years, you know, uh, after you see, actually after the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco, you see people beginning to evolve, you know, the building, uh, you know, structures to try to withstand these things. So um, now the thing about that house was that, uh, you know, the part that we didn't touch, which was in the front, is, of course, different than what we built in the back. Today's mm -hmm. codes are, uh, you know, very safe, but the original codes are not. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think there's a difference between you have to, you know, between a new structure and an old structure. Mm -hmm. And so when you walked inside the home, were you thinking, wow, this place is really dangerous or did it worry you at all? Um, it does. I mean, the, you know, anytime you have a uh, one or two story structure, um, you know, it's going to be built and that's old. It's going to be built out of wood. So it is going to have some, that's the better material. When you have mm -hmm. a masonry structure, a brick home or something mm -hmm. like that, you see, you know, less of those in, in uh, Southern California. That's when you need to worry. But a wood structure is going to perform better in an earthquake than, uh, you know, than a masonry structure or a taller structure. Mm -hmm. So actually the uh, LA code allows for uh, single story wooden structures to be built even today without a structural engineer. They have a standard plan online to allow people to do this in an efficient way. So a single story wood structure, as long as you have a good foundation, it's going to be uh, safe. So so uh, that house was kind of okay. It, but once we added the second story, there was a hillside there. Mm. So the back of the house was really two stories high. Then once we added that second story, that usable second story, then it's a three story structure. It starts to you know, approach some danger level. So we had, when we made that addition, we had to, of course, upgrade the structure. So in an older structure, if you have a brick foundation uh, and you have a single-story house or a two-story house, that's where the danger is because you can't retrofit, although some, con some you know, bad contracts will try to talk you into oh, that. Really? You can't retrofit to a brick foundation because basically what you're doing is you're taking a bolt, you're attaching the bottom... Uh, the bottom part of the wood structure to mm. the foundation, and uh, that that bracket uh, will just be going into one uh, brick. Pretty much, you have to think of. So, in an earthquake shaker, all those bricks are going to you know fall apart. So you can't you know in a sense you're you're retrofitting your house to one or two bricks. Oh, so geez. obviously that's not a good idea. So if you have a brick foundation, you really need to you know upgrade that foundation. How common are, are brick foundations? In brick foundations are very common really? in uh, Los Angeles before 1920. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so would you, a brick home be on a brick foundation? Uh, probably, yeah. But uh, if it was in the 20s or 30s, it might not have. They did start to use more uh, uh, concrete foundations after the 20s. But there are wooden homes on brick foundations. Yes, there are. And the problem with brick foundations, it, there are a couple things. One is you can't retrofit to it. And the other thing is that uh, usually the mortar in a brick foundation from that period 
had a lot of organic material in it. It wasn't very good. So as the water mm. uh, seeps into the sure. mortar, it's it crumbling. begins to deteriorate. So when you go see these brick foundations, usually you can just pull the bricks right apart by oh, hand. Oh, I bet. So yeah. what, are, what are you to do then if you can't retrofit it? Here you are in a well, wood home on a brick. That's the problem is you have to replace it. And it's a, it's a large cost. Replace the foundation. Yeah, you have to replace it. In order to retrofit, you have to have a uh, concrete uh, foundation. Uh-huh. There's just you know no other way about it. Um, if you have a home that's later, after the 20s or so, and you have a concrete foundation, uh, the uh, the key area there is your cripple wall. That's the mm-hmm. area of failure that, uh, you know, when people say that their house fell off the foundation, that's what happened. Is you have to think of the foundation is more or less embedded in the, in the dirt and the grade, and it's going to move with the earth. Then you have your house, however tall it is, above that. And you have to think of your first floor... Uh, and above, that's the main mass or weight of the house. Between, in order to get the first floor off the ground, off the grade, so that you step up to your house, uh, that little wall is called a cripple wall. And often in, uh, well, it is in old construction, it's very flimsily built because it's built just for gravity. So it's often just two by fours and there's there's no lateral stability. So as soon as you have a shaker, you have the foundation moving with the ground, then you have the mass of the house, all your contents, all the all the you know floor joists, ceiling, a, you know uh, attic, uh, roof, everything. That huge mass, tons of 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 weight, moving at another rhythm. That tiny little cripple wall. And if you go down into your uh, crawl space and you look at it, it's just very flimsy. Uh, that is what fails because it's just made out of two by fours mm-hmm. and it just flops right over. So if there's if you uh, you know so the main thing is you know your foundation, but after that it's the cripple wall. You want to make sure uh, that you put plywood or shear wall on that cripple wall. That gives you the lateral stability, the side to side stability that you need in an earthquake. So that will attach you know your the upper mass of your house to the uh, to the mm-hmm. foundation more or less. So, so that, what... that's really the critical area is the uh, cripple wall. So between the foundation and or the cripple wall, if we were to need that, what's the price point? Just kind of a generic range. Uh, you know, really, you have to think of uh, a foundation replacement for the typical single story, two story uh, home. It's going to be between two hundred fifty to three hundred a linear foot. So it's expensive. Uh, you know, your standard, uh, let's say, uh, fifteen hundred single story home or a three thousand foot uh, two story home with a fifteen hundred square foot footprint mm-hmm. is going to be about forty. You know, on the lower end, forty to fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. And that's difficult for people when you're remodeling because, um, you know, you've got a budget and suddenly a huge chunk of it goes to something you can't see. you can't see. see. It, you know, why not get solar panels? Yeah, or, right, know, get right. And it's difficult for people because, you know, and in remodels, uh, even when we do that house we did for this old house, yeah. typically 25% of your budget will go into structure and you just don't see it. You know, you don't, you don't get a kitchen out of it. You know, you don't see it. But but then so again, you get safety or at least peace do. of mind. Well, it's you know? good that you're doing this show because I think what happens is that over the years we get complacent. I totally. mean, the, the statistic is that uh, there's going to be a 7.0 or greater earthquake in Southern California within the next 25 years. 90% chance it is going to happen. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen in te- you know a year. It may happen in 10 years. It is going to happen. And we do get complacent, as you were mentioning, with the earthquake yeah. kits. You know, we get complacent with our, our structure as well. And how is that earthquake of yours coming? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to work on it this weekend. Yeah, right? yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Well, don't go away. We have more to talk about in terms of uh, making your home safer. Uh, we're talking with the guy who knows all about retrofitting. Is the structure that you live in safe? What about a brick house? Is that going to be dangerous for you? More on that and uh, what to do about it. You're listening to Home Wizard Cindy Dole here on KFWB News Talk 980. The fun continues right after this. Welcome back. Cindy Dole here. And yeah, we want higher ground ever since that Japan earthquake and tsunami. I felt like I'm looking at every building and every home, my home differently thinking, oh my gosh, is it safe? Is it safe now? Welcome back to the show. And uh, we're talking about safety uh, as we all talk about all things home, uh, garden and life improvement. But how can we not talk about the safety kit, which we mentioned earlier in the show? And now, uh, oh, by the way, you can download or just to print out the, the list of ingredients that you should have on the website, cindydole.com. But what about just your home? I mean, this is the place where you're spending the chunk of your life. And uh, are you in a wooden home? Are you in a stucco home? Are you in a brick home? Is it safe? Well, with me is a guy who, who makes it his job to uh, to make them safer, uh, Steve Paul Rand, who is the founder of Homefront Construction, and we were just getting to uh, what is the most dangerous home to live in, Steve? <laughs> uh, well, your unreinforced masonry structure, yeah. i.e. brick, you know, is going to be uh, very dangerous. So it's beautiful. Yeah, it's difficult, you know, because we want to preserve these, uh, you know, these structures. Yeah. You know, for example, the St. Bibiana Cathedral downtown, you know, these are historic resources. It's a part of our community. This is our, you know, historic 
architectural heritage yeah. uh, and their gorgeous you know structures so and it's even difficult with the very few adobe homes we have left how do you uh retrofit these things to uh preserve uh the beauty of what we have and uh and yet make it safe for people to uh be in and it, it is difficult and so you have to can find you i mean can you, you can make... you can do anything it's just a question of cost <laughs> so uh but you know inherently a uh you know a brick uh structure is going to be very difficult and very costly because each brick the mortar is going to pretty much dissolve, and each brick is going to move independently. So you can just see failures, you know, mm. uh, very, very. What high. is the most outrageously expensive brick makeover that you've had to, to truly give it a retrofitting, safety, seal, you know, well, seal of approval? Well, I think actually the most difficult one I've encountered, but we didn't do it, was an adobe structure. And an adobe is kind of like brick in that it's earth, and it's just going to crumble in a uh, as soon as it starts to move. And in order to, you know, in order to save that, we ended up having to consider. In, in casing and caging the whole thing to make it, mm. and it just seemed, in the end it was crazy because then you couldn't see the Adobe anymore. So it was just very costly. Um, so, you know, you can uh, put a, uh, a a concrete wall behind the brick and try to and attach that to it. But again, it's all very costly and you're, you know, it's uh, difficult for people in a residential situation to afford that. So people who live in a high rise are better off than someone who lives in a brick house? Uh, uh, well, there was a, uh, after the Northridge earthquake, there was a code that came into effect, and you do see those, uh, that most uh, apartment buildings that, or masonry have had some reinforcement done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know how great that is. It's a, it's a patch. <laughs> but I know that I was living in a four, uh, four-story four unreinforced masonry structure, and when I spoke to the structural engineer, he said, you know, it's designed to withstand an event. But it's not designed to withstand two events. So, you know, in those types of structures, when it happens, you get mm-hmm. out and you don't go back in for the because the aftershocks could crumble it. So I think that's the only, you know, mm. take home message people mm-hmm. should have. Well, that's the other thing that always gets me kind of puzzled and baffled as far as like where you go during an earthquake, depending on the kind of home, because now the whole message is stay inside your home. Don't run outside. Just duck, you know, drop cover and hold the heck on. Yeah. And um, but knowing what you know structurally, I mean, I grew up with standing in the doorway. I don't right. know. It just felt like the thing to do. I mean, I remember with my mom in the 70s standing in our metal mm-hmm. frame sliding glass door mm-hmm. frame. I mean, we, the glass was away. We opened it up so the glass wouldn't get us, but we felt okay. And then we're watching the pool slosh around. Right. But now they say, don't do that. Yeah. So yeah. structurally, knowing what you know, what would be a safer thing? <laughs> <laughs> What's the situation exactly? That? Well, I mean, you know, if you live in a in a brick home, yeah. And you have a sliding door. Are you better standing in the sliding door? I, you know, I'm no expert on this, so I don't want to get in trouble okay. saying anything. Don't but say but let me say, what I do is Whisper. I figure out how far how far it is for me to get to that door. And and I'm because the earthquake, it's going to start shaking, but things aren't going to start falling down immediately. You yeah. got you got some time. So I usually try to figure, can I sprint out that door? And really? That's is that what usually you do? what I do. <laughs> really? I but know. But if I'm, if I'm four stories up in the back of a building, then I do stand in the doorway because you're you're, you're likely to get hit by some falling debris. So you oh, have yeah. to wait for the event to Well, the power lines and all yeah. the, and the trees. Right. Well, let's bring in right. speaking but, you of know, a... The thing is that you know, what we, earthquakes don't kill people. It's the structures that do. So that's mm-hmm. the main thing that we have to keep in mind is you do need to retrofit your structure. You do need to you know make sure you're in a, in a safe structure. Because when you look at Haiti where there weren't, uh, you know, where they didn't have, they may have building codes, but there's not much enforcement. There was a huge amount of deaths because of the uh, structures, uh, whereas Japan, mostly what we've seen of tsunami damage, not earthquake, you know, mm-hmm. structure damage. Mm-hmm. And in terms of the most dangerous place to be in a structure that you've seen that you've had to retrofit, what would you say is the, in, besides the, the type of Well, home? I, I think, I guess the, what I would say is that if you're in a home and you have a brick chimney, Make sure that you don't have a bedroom uh, near where that brick chimney could fail, because that brick chimney is a huge mass. It's going to move at a different uh, 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 ratio rhythm. than the, the rhythm than the mm-hmm. house. They're going to, you know, if it's on the outside of your house, it's going to slap against your house. That's going that potential for that brick chimney to fail is huge, and that that could, you know, go in on any room that is within, uh, you know, ten feet of. And that you think brick of people structure. that have fireplaces in their bedrooms. Right. So that's it. Is yeah. you have to think where that chimney stack is, and just don't put your bed near that chimney stack, or don't have that be a bedroom. I I think that's the safest way to approach that. And what's a safer fireplace? Can you just avoid having a, a brick Well, the city chimney? of L.A. now is pretty much uh, won't allow them to be built. Mm-hmm. So when they find any fault, what they do is they make you tear the masonry stack down to the throat, which is kind of where the mantle is, mm-hmm. and then you rebuild it out of metal studs. So uh, they're that's trying much... to just get rid of masonry because, those, yeah. like I said, those you know, independent stacks like that, they're going to fail. 
so above that's the roof line or above the throat. Yeah, that's good news. Well, let's bring in somebody else. Uh, speaking of all this, um, somebody who, uh, well, I guess has seen a lot of destruction firsthand. Michael Underwood, whose grandfather is a former LA fire chief and dad a captain, and uh, you yourself a former fireman and paramedic. And so we were talking on the phone earlier, knowing that we we're going to be here on the show. You're wearing a different hat later in the show, but in your earthquake awareness capacity, I mean, you have your kit. Yes. And in, in your home, where do you go when the shaking I, happens? I still go old school. I'm, I'm underneath the door um, the or doorway. or at the corner of the room, away from the windows, because uh-huh. you really want to be away from those windows, because that, that, the, the glass goes everywhere. So that's kind of where I go. Um, running out um, is another whole story, because Steve was talking about chimney and mm-hmm. how that falls and that's kind of what you have to worry about when you run outside i know a lot of people who just run outside because they don't want to be inside but um i still think underneath the door is pretty Mm -hmm. you know it's good or or underneath a desk depending on where you're at so really you should think about and this is something that you guys i'm sure do all the time you have to almost role play in your mind when you have some spare time and why not today um okay it's bedtime i'm in my bed and it's happening now what would i do boom I'm going to just stay in bed and put a pillow over my head, or I'm going to roll over to the side and just kind of duck, or whatever, right? Never happens. First, if you have kids, first thing is you you're going to go and get the kids oh out my, of the bed. And that's... And that's... And then you've got them under each arm, um, you know, and then I, I still think the doorway or, or a desk, something sturdy is the best place to be under. But what about the door slapping you in the head? <sighs> Well, I'm, I I don't really right I, I don't think I've ever had that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I've never really thought about that happening. I'm I'm more worried about um, things falling, cabinets, uh, yeah. mirrors breaking. That's a big one. And um, is the doorway? That's a pretty sound part of the structure of a home. Uh, it is because usually you'll have a wall, a structure that's supporting that. So it's uh, it's better than being in the middle of a room now, where you know beams can fall down. In, in the house that I was at, the apartment I was in during the Northridge quake. We had a Spanish-style uh, thing, and there were faux beams. Those things came down like guillotines. Oh, my God. So luckily, I was standing in the doorway there. Uh, so so the middle of the room is bad. Is bad, yeah. But I've heard that being against the walls are bad. <laughs> so, uh, I'd say being against the wall is probably better than being in the middle of the room. Don't be in the middle. But uh, and, Yeah, no, I agree. Okay. I, but, I, I, totally I think agree. I think you're right. People should role play in their house yeah, and just like say, kid, what, like what am kitchen. I going to do? As, as, as you know, Michael mentioned. Well, you know, I, I'm completely removing everything in my kitchen. I don't know what I'm going to do with my glassware because it's right there. It's in, Right now it's in for convenience sake, and it's right there where it's going to come you know, slamming out. Right. You know, all those glasses. I guess I need to put them on the lower level, but how convenient is we'll that? Well, put the earthquake latches on your Put the earthquake door. latches. Most people don't like that because it's a double action. You can't just open yeah. your cabinet. You have to uh-huh. open and flick a latch. Mm-hmm. So most people don't do that, but that that is the safest thing to do. How about the safety of a bathroom? I was thinking, what if you're in the middle of taking a shower? I, when I was growing up, my dad always said that the bathroom was really structurally sound because of all the plumbing that goes into a bathroom. Is that nonsense? No. no. <laughs> I don't buy that one. Oh, Dad, where Sorry. were you coming from? <laughs> maybe so, maybe fire-wise. Fire, right. if there's a fire, I mean, oh, really? you know, bathtub, okay. submerge yourself, you know, okay. to a point. But, yeah, no, not, I don't think I'd want to be Get in out the bathroom. Of there. Yeah. yeah. Be, it'd be my mirror. luck. I mean, there's I mean, if, mirrors. If you're, yeah, there's mirrors. If you're in the shower, you're going to slip, you know, bang your head. Glass you know, doors yeah. on the shower, you know, depending right. on what you have. Okay. The kitchen, though, is definitely one of the worst places to be, I yes, think. Yes, it is. Because, because of all, all your cabinets empty out. And, mm-hmm. the, you know, if you're barefoot, all the glass that's How broken about the plates. laundry room? I hear that that's a real sturdy room because the, the, the washer and the dryer, they're not going to be going anywhere. Uh, I don't know. I, I Bedroom, I mean, when, when bedroom you, or hallway, you know, yeah. hallway door is good because you're near you're, you're near an access point to get out. So I would okay. just go for the hallway door. All right. All right. Well, thanks for your time, guys. Uh, check out your website. It's hunt, homefrontbuild.com. Right. And there's a few more episodes yet on PBS. Mm-hmm. If you're watching uh, the wonderful show, uh, This Old House, and you'll be able to see your, your work in action as you retrofitted this home for this lovely family in Silver Lake. So uh, thanks, Steve, for, for sharing some of your time with me. Steve, Paul, Ren, and, and Michael, we'll have you come in. Don't you go away because we're going to talk to you in another capacity next okay. as we you we shift it. gears we're going to head to the garden now because believe it or not michael has traded in <clears> the <throat> firefighting for landscaping he and his soon-to-be brother-in-law are working up magic at the uh, upcoming pasadena showcase house that's next how to make that come alive in your front yard cindy dole home wizards we're back after this it's just hanging by a thread.